Hi, this is Rachel Rehart from Pure Photoshop Actions, and I just want to share a couple of tips today about how to uh, save time in your workflow. And the tip today is going to be on how to do a workflow action, which is using multiple actions within your action palette with just one click. So I'm going to show you how to make a workflow action, and you're going to love this because it will save you a lot of time. I do this, and if I uh, I'm using a, just a lot of global edits, like maybe uh, a vintage look or a haze or a color pop, white balance adjustments. I can put those all together and I can batch it over multiple images. However, sometimes, and usually this is me, um, I'm a little bit of that more obsessive compulsive person. I like to touch each image and do some a little bit of dodging, a little bit of burning, maybe even some skin smoothing. And in that case, it still saves me a lot of time to have just one action that I'm able to click rather than constantly going back, finding the actions I want, clicking on them, going back again and again and again. It saves me time to just have my workflow set up, bang, in one step and have it be done. Um, so this can save you a lot of time. And as we know, time is money. Also, it gives your images a very consistent look. I tend to do a workflow for each session because I want all of the images in that session to have a consistent look. I still want to be, I do it for each session because I want to give each session and each lighting the actions that are going to best give it a look that will really be flattering for that specific session, that lighting, the coloring, all of that. But I'm going to use the same actions over and over and over so that as the clients have their photos, they can make a very consistent looking wall grouping, they can make a very nice album, and it all looks consistent and I look professional. I like that a lot. You can also use these workflow actions from one to another, one session to another, but be aware that if the lighting isn't the same and the straight out of camera image doesn't have the same conditions, it will look different in each uh, session because the lighting plays an important part as we edit things. And I think this comes up on our page a lot, people wanting to specifically make their image, images look exactly the way that our edits do. But if the lighting conditions aren't exactly the same, you won't ever get the exact same edit because what goes into it plays a big part in what comes back out. So I'm gonna show how that works uh, in a moment on a couple different photos. But to quickly make the workflow action, this is very simple, however, if you're using elements, you can't do this. You need to have the full version of Photoshop. You'll come over here to your actions palette right here. You'll click on this folder button, which is the new set icon. You'll click that and you'll be able to make a new set. When I make a new set for my sessions, I name it after the clients in the image. So this is Kim's family. So there will be Kim's workflow, just so I can keep track in case I get interrupted while I'm editing. So there's Kim's workflow. I'll come over and I'll click the new action icon which looks like a little page with the corner being pulled up. I click that and this one I'm going to call it basic workflow because there are some things that I'm going to do to every image. Maybe there's a few images that need a little more help and I might do something else to them but if I know what the basic workflow is I can come back over and over. If the lighting changes I may have basic workflow plus a couple other things that I might do but for right now we're starting out this whole uh, image. This is really this is the first picture of the session shot. So this is, we're just going to come up with the basic workflow. What I like to do a lot, I think I've shared this on the page multiple times, but it kind of is something that I figure let's, let's share it again. This is what I like to do because I feel like it gives me a nice clean palette, a good clean starting place. So I can start with sunshine baby and that comes down here. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to run, turn out the lights baby. And I play that down here. As you see, it's recording. There's that little red recording icon. Also notice that I'm not painting on these masks yet. Uh, even though I'm opening them up, I'm not painting on them yet. Then I come over here and I say, you know what? I love Studio Pop. That's one of my favorite things to do to an image. So I'm gonna run that. I like it, but it's a little bit too strong. So maybe I'm gonna say, okay, the default 49 is too much. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna bring it down to maybe 30%. And I like that better. So for right now, I'm just going to stop this right here, you know, and actually let me add one more thing because this also, I love to do this to an image. I think it looks great. I'm going to come over to our follow your color. This is a trick I have. I'm going to use the follow your haze warm. I'm going to run that. Now I have this now that's just, it's overpowering for this particular image and that lighting type of thing. So I don't want to do that, but to give it a nice finish, sort of a well softened finish. I'm going to come over here 
I'm gonna bring it down to about 18% and it just smooths it and it kind of lifts areas that are a little bit too dark, but it still has great contrast and it has a nice smooth finished look about it. So now I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to stop the recording that I have been doing. So I stopped that. Now, if I was to go over here and I can remove all of this setup that I've just spent forever doing, I can throw that into the garbage can. And you know what? If I click on basic workflow and I press play, look what happens. I just set up what I did and it's all ready. So now all I have to do is I come in and I say, okay, I'm going to do a little sunshine. I have my brush. My opacity is low. I can make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to kind of gently, oh, and I need to come over here and make sure that this is set to the white on top because when I'm painting on a black mask, I need to have a white brush so that it'll show. So I'm going to come through and just paint in maybe just a little bit of sunshine into their faces. And there we go, just kind of brighten up that area. And then maybe I'll come along here, make my brush nice and big, and kind of just bring in a little bit of a very gentle vignette that just kind of, it makes them more of the center of this image. So I go like this and look, so Sunshine does this, Lights Out does this. We have Studio Pop that gives it that nice little pop and a little bit of fill. And then I have Follow Your Haze Warm that just gives it that nice smoothing overall effect. And this image is done. So that is really, really simple. Uh, and I can just use this over and over and over and over again with one click. I think it's spectacular. However, let's come over to this. This is shot in the same location right here. And, uh, however, this was in such a dreary, cloudy, I mean, the, it was just, there was no sun to be seen and it was thick and cold and dark. And so, as you can tell, the whole feeling of this image is very different. Now I could run this and it's probably going to do okay. I have a little bit of pop. It lifts it a little, but you know what? I'm probably going to want to bring up you know, the haze and, and because I need to lift some of those shadows under the eyes, things like that. I'm probably going to even want to come in and do something like adding a white balance. So as you can see, I'm, you know, it's, it's different for each image, even though this worked out perfectly for this family, it doesn't work out perfectly for this family, even though this turned into a great image. Once I had edited it, edited it, edited it in a way that fit the specifications of this image and this lighting situation. So this is just something to think about. I, and you know, as I said, you may have an action that you run on everything and it can totally work. But for the way that we edit photos, we want to make sure that we kind of touch each image in each, you know, each session in a way that speaks specifically to that session. So if you have uh, any questions, feel free to post on our Facebook page, Peer Actions for Photographers, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, also, it would be fun to see images uh, that you're able to do using this method of having a giant workflow action that's going to save you a lot of time. Um, anyway, this is something that we very much recommend doing, and thank you so much for listening. Have a nice day. This is Rachel Rehart from Pure Photoshop Actions.